All right, this is Yves from Fractal Engineering. And if you just got yourself a TBS Lucid All-in-One 1 to 2 s it will most likely come with Betaflight firmware, which is absolutely fine for this type of build. This is my wingman. Uh, it flies for over 20 minutes on a single 18650 lithium ion can cover over 10 kilometers of distance in that time so for this kind of application uh, GPS and GPS rescue that uh, Betaflight offers can be uh, yeah very very useful focus there you go all right however if you're looking to build a whoop uh, or anything that is really just meant for flying then Quicksilver might be something worth trying it is a flight controller firmware just like Betaflight but with a much leaner design uh, philosophy that lets you very quickly get to a really great feeling uh, tune and so in this video I'm going to try to give you as quickly uh, of a rundown of how to get started uh, with it. So, the first thing we're going to need to do here is... Yeah, uh, get the drivers right. I'm going to move the camera to craft. Alright, so... Because this flight controller uses an R30 8032 uh, MCU, it's going to need different drivers than the STM driver that you with, for the flight controllers we've been using up to that point, like a 3 a 4 a 7 a 7 So uh, you're going to need different drivers. And these can be had at uh, the Artery website. I'm going to include all the links for the drivers that you need. So you're going to need two drivers. The first one is the uh, VCP driver for the serial communications. And then the second one is the ICP slash AIP, they updated it, for the DFU mode. So once you have these drivers, you can go to the configurator, which is right here on config.bustobby.com. Make sure that you get to this, uh, that, that you access the configurator with Chrome only, so no Brave, no other browser than Chrome. And uh, yeah, you need to get to bootloader, so here you can do it directly from the configurator. Reset to bootloader. Boom, it's in DFU already. Source release, choose the latest one. Then for the target, you want to use the TBS uh, Lucid All-in-One. And you're ready to flash. I'm not going to do it for this one because we want to keep it quick. Now, once you're flash, here is what the interface looks like. So let's go over quickly all the tabs. So first you have the profile uh, tab where you can save and load the profile. So this is basically the equivalent to your Betaflight diff or dump all. So here you can do it very simply by loading or saving it as a file. It's a YAML file. You can also change the target here by saving or load the target. Uh, they are runtime targets, so if you want to reassign resources, uh, this can be done through uh, the YAML file as well. In the setup tab, tab, you have your model that shows the gyro orientation. There is no yo, so uh, yeah, you can only yeah, figure it out with uh, yo, uh, yeah, roll and pitch. Uh, here is the important bit, the serial. So the receiver is on port 5. VTX, I put it on port 2 because it's the nearest to the uh, video out. And when you plug it in, your protocol is going to appear here. 
with all your VTX uh, settings. Then moving on to rates, here you have your rate profiles uh, and all your different rate uh, modes. Well, actually, <laughs> all the most used ones. And uh, down here we have the PIDs, which is also uh, the important bit. So if you are starting a build from scratch, you have the PID presets here that uh, give you a baseline to get started with a tune. So uh, whoever you, yeah, basically they are sorted by size. So here, for instance, if I'm building a 75 millimeter one S whoop, boom, it's right here, 65, two inch. And uh, yeah, so you will choose the closest uh, size to what you currently have to get started. And if you, have a flyaway if it uh, the tune is too hot then you will just uh, loosen it up a bit by going one size up so you can try going one two size up if uh, you have flyaway issues if it keeps flying away you probably have another issue with your build then you have filters very simple as well usually you want if you have still issues with uh, flyaways you can increase the, uh, the type to PT3. Uh, we we'll go over all of this towards the end. Then you have a receiver tab. Here, uh, when you first flash it, it will probably come with the protocol on auto. And uh, what that means is that it's going to cycle through all the, all the available protocols before locking on to Crossfire. So I would recommend uh, yeah, setting up to Crossfire, locking it in so that it immediately uh, locks onto it at startup. RC channels to uh, check your uh, mapping, and all our modes are here. Next is OSD tab here as well, very simply uh, simplified. Uh, OSD interface, all the elements you will ever need uh, for just simply flying are here. And you can change your font right here. Down the motor tab, you can test your motors here. It only goes up to 50% uh, throttle, and you can load your ESC settings here to uh, reverse the motors directly and reassign your pins here if needed. And finally, the black bots. Uh, yeah, if you're starting off a fresh build, uh, you probably might want to reset it for the first time. Make sure you get uh, good rights from there on. And that's about it. So, uh, if you have, any, if you need any more information, it's all in the docs at uh, docs.bosshobby.com quick start guide, everything to get you started with uh, yeah, flashing, configuring, and if uh, you have any problem, feel free to reach out on the official Discord, the link is right here. I'm sure that uh, yeah, there will always be someone to help you out figuring out your issues there. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, I hope that uh, you found it helpful and uh, yeah, happy flying! <laughs>